series on how to Hello. and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a collective card game in Unity. In this video, we're going to show an alternative method to be able to save our card data through a scriptable object. Let's get started. So last video, I was going over how the classes work. We created this class name card. It was going to work here with this display card to put the information into our card. And at the end of the video, I mentioned how you could also do this through a scriptable object. However, I kind of failed to describe or discuss what the scriptable object was. And there's probably some questions about the difference between the class and the scriptable object. So I'm going to take this video to do this since I just finished this in the other video and it's relatable on back to back videos. So what I did here is that I created a new card class. I just called it card two and I made that a scriptable object. And then I created another card display similar to this one, not quite the same. And I also back here in unity, I just kind of, uh, deactivated the card here, which I would do just by clicking this box. And I did the same thing with the card database. And then I just created this card right here. It's just a duplicate of this card that's up here. Same thing. But the difference is I attach the card display script to it. And we're going to talk about a scriptable object and show you how one works. So essentially, a scriptable object is a container for data. Now, if we didn't have scriptable objects when doing things like this card game, we would probably have to create a whole bunch of game objects and probably prefabs with different information in it or different things in it. So if we had like 52 cards, we'd probably have to create 52 individual game objects. And that's not very clean as opposed to creating a scriptable object that can be used to instantiate different objects that can contain similar or the same data. So with that in mind, we go back over here to our script and here is our card two. And here I have it as a scriptable object. Now, nothing here on the surface appears very much different. I created some strings and some ints. And the only difference here is I didn't create this uh, function right here because I don't really have to because I have the scriptable object. And also right up here at the top, I have this line of code, create asset menu, file name equals new card, comma, menu name equals card. And what this did is that it created right here, if I go down here and I go to assets, it created, when I right click, I go up to create, and now it has this new menu item called card. And this is what I created with that script. And right here, I had a sample of it, and I'll make another one in a second. I called it Halfling. It's from Dungeons and Dragons. And I can put the name of it right here. Here's all the information from that script. It's just name, description, uh, mana cost, and attack. We'll just assume that's similar to the uh, asset I created called Strength. And those are right here, and I can just fill those in and attach this to this new card and I can do the same thing if I make another one I go to create and I go to create card let's go back to Dungeons and Dragons and call this one half elf so I have my halfling here I'll just put the name on it I'll put halfling and for those who don't know who don't play Dungeons and Dragons this is similar to a hobbit so the description we'll put this is a Halfling. And the mana cost, I don't know, we'll pick a random number like six. The attack power will put one. And right here for the half elf, we'll write half elf. And our description, this is a half elf. And we'll put the mana cost at four and the attack power at three. So now that we have that settled, we have here our card and we have here our public information right here. And in the first card, I'm just going to grab this. Oops, let's go back. I'm going to grab this right here and I'm going to put this right in the card. There's our halfling card in the card slot. And in our name for our name text, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to grab name text and I'm going to put that there. And then I have a description. So I have my description text that's going to go there in mana, mana image, mana text. 
right there and right here under power. I think I called it strength earlier, but I'm going to take that and put that in the attack text right here. And so when I hit play, it will fill in all this information just like it did the previous time. And also what I could do if I want to change everything, I can just stop and I can go ahead and I can grab my, oops, go click on my card and grab the half elf and I can insert that card there. And when I hit play, it will put all the information for the half elf right there. So it acts in the same way as our previous card and card database scripts did, only in the case we are just using it in the form of the scriptable object. Like I said earlier, the reason why I was doing the class was because there's sometimes differences at runtime for uh, classes that will act a little differently than scriptable objects. Might be some people out there who will watch this and debate my use of the class, but I think I'm going to go forward with it. It's going to work. But I still wanted to make sure that you understood the difference between the class and the scriptable, excuse me, a scriptable object and had some good background information how to create a scriptable object and how it's used. So that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. And as always, a big special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. All links are in the description below. See you next time.